welcome back into the channel. In today's video, we're going to be continuing our series on which ratings and traits matter at each position within Madden 24, a series that we are revisiting because it's been quite a while since we've done this, and some things have changed going from prior Maddens to Madden 24 with the addition of ratings such as change of direction and the way certain things operate, so it is certainly important for us to cover this topic. I know a lot of people have been requesting that we get on to our Hidden gem series, and that will be coming in due time but keep in mind that i have a ton going on and i'm just trying to get out the videos as my time allows and i do plan to get onto it it might just be a little bit later than you would typically want for today's video we are going to be covering strong safeties and free safeties because in madden they are very much similar in the responsibilities that they take on in certain defenses you might see players doing slightly different things, but we can kind of encompass that into the conversation today. Generally speaking, on a base level, they're going to be doing a lot of the same things between free safety and strong safety, so let's go ahead and jump into that. I would like to first cover the traits on these players, and there's really only one trait, maybe two, that are going to impact the way that your players play at the free safety or strong safety positions, and the one most important one is going to be their play ball tendency. You, generally speaking, want to see safeties that are looking to capitalize on badly thrown balls, tipped balls, those types of things, hitting players and whatnot. And so you want the aggressive play ball tendency trait on any safety that you have on your defense. Having the aggressive play ball tendency means that these players are going to go up for interceptions. They're going to attack the football. Now it does come with a trade-off. Sometimes they will go up for a football and miss and allow the receiver to catch the ball behind them and you know move for extra yardage or a touchdown. So there is a trade-off to it. Having the balanced play ball tendency is not necessarily a bad thing. Having conservative is something you can work with, but you have to know that they're not necessarily going to go after the ball in the same ways that somebody with the aggressive trait would. The other trait to maybe consider here is the high motor trait, and this is going to be for every position. I don't know exactly how this factors into the algorithm, but I have seen high motor players play at their capability more consistently, and that's what it's supposed to do. I just don't know for sure if it is always working the way that it's supposed to within Madden. And you may want to also look at the penalty tendency of these players, depending on how many flags you see in your leagues or whatever game mode you're playing. Generally, this isn't going to be a problem for most users, especially in Ultimate Team and other modes. In Franchise Mode, maybe more so because you'll see penalties, but having the undisciplined penalty tendency in a league where you do see a lot of penalties could result in extra face masks, could result in pass interference penalties, so just something to be aware of. We then have to take a look at the player's ratings, where there are quite a few things that are going to be important for these players, but there are going to be some things that you might think are important or might seem important based on the way they are presented within the game, but are not going to affect these players quite as much as one might think. The most important thing for these players and for I mean, almost any player within Madden is going to be their athleticism, and that is going to include their speed, acceleration, change of direction, and agility. And for this case, especially for defensive backs and receivers and those types of players, they're jumping as well. You can see here that Cameron Curl has 86 speed. Now, what I want you to think about as far as the players that these guys are going up against is how the 86 speed is going to compare against those players. You're talking about a player that is going to be outmatched in speed by most receivers, most running backs, and even some quarterbacks within the game. That's going to make it a struggle for this player to track them down and take proper angles to cut those players off and prevent them from doing the things that a safety is supposed to prevent them from doing. That means getting over top on the defense, coming down and supporting in the run game, as well as covering those players from time to time. A good way to think about your safeties is a cross between a linebacker and a cornerback. It has to be a player that can play in coverage, that has to be athletic enough to be able to cover, such as a cornerback, but they also have to have the skill set to be able to make tackles, to be able to pursue, and those types of things. So 86 speed is not the best. You're looking for a player at both free safety and strong safety that are in the 90 plus range. The higher the better, because that means they're going to be able to keep up with the faster players in the game, and that means that they're going Going to be able to react and adjust quicker whenever you consider their other athleticism factors such as acceleration, agility, change of direction, and jumping. Jumping is one that I specifically want to highlight that is going to be incredibly important for all safeties and defensive backs alike. It's actually interesting because it would be often overlooked by users in Madden if you're just taking a quick glance at a player's player card. 
jumping is not on a strong safeties player card as you can see here so we right off the bat have some stats that don't matter at all and we're missing some stats that are very important for this position there is a baseline behind the scenes in madden that we are aware of at 85 if a player has 85 or better jumping they are going to be able to trigger certain animations they're going to be able to start triggering animations and the higher that you get beyond that the more they're going to be able to go up and contest passes go up for interceptions and those types of things ideally you want 90 plus jumping on any of these players and the higher the better generally moving up in increments of five is a great way to think about something like jumping because the difference between 85 and 88 not really going to be seen within the game but if you jump from 85 to 90 you're going to start to see a difference and same thing from 90 to 95 and so on so athleticism is king here you want a fast safety you want a player that can accelerate up to their top speed quick you want a player that can jump up and make plays and you want a player that has agility and change of direction so that they can change direction and attack the football if they can't change direction or if they can't cut and attack the football they're not going to be a whole lot of use to you in the secondary there are actually a lot of safeties in the game that have straight line speed much like wide receivers there are a lot of wide receivers in the game that have straight line speed that struggle to adjust to the football that is something you very much want to be aware of if you can find your player that has the aggressive play ball tendency that has good speed acceleration agility change of direction and jumping you are nine tenths of the way there to having a productive free safety or strong safety at that point it's just about developing them and filling in some of the categories that are going to determine how they actually play on the field from that point, we're then going to talk about their zone coverage, awareness, and play recognition. Those are the next tier of ratings that are going to be important for this position. A player's zone coverage is going to determine how well they're able to cover in zone coverage, which is primarily what your safeties are going to be doing. Even when you're in man coverage, typically you're in a cover two man, or you might be in a cover one, and there's at least one safety that is in zone coverage. Generally, more often than anything else, your safeties are going to be in zone coverage, so they have to be able to work successfully in zone coverage. Anything above an 80 is solid for a safety. I've noticed that 80 is kind of the threshold that you want for a free safety or a strong safety for them to be relatively productive consistently. Anything above that is certainly going to help. I also think about zone coverage in increments of five. Nonetheless, though, 80 plus is going to be good for you. We then go on to talk about awareness and play recognition. Generally, users aren't going to be using safeties that often. Now, that's not to speak for everybody. There are some people that use safeties and use them certainly really well. If you are physically using a safety, you do not have to worry about awareness and play recognition because you are the one that is aware of what's going on and is in charge of recognizing what the play is and telling your player where to go. If you are not controlling your safety, awareness and play recognition is going to determine how well they play the football, how well they read, whether it's a run or a pass and get to where they need to get to and read which threats are coming into their zone, who they need to cover, where they need to go and how they need to operate within that play. Awareness is very self-explanatory for these players in the fact it is a heads up mindset. Your higher awareness rating is going to make your player more heads up. They're going to be very alert to what's going on around them. A lower awareness rating means that their head might be turned a lot. They might not react quick enough. They might not know what's going on. Play recognition is more so directed towards whether they can recognize quickly if it is a run, a pass, play action pass, so on and so forth, where the football is going. One thing that you generally do not need to worry about with a safety is their man coverage. This is something that hyperinflates safety's ratings across the board. There are a lot of safeties in the game that are given 80 plus man coverage, but they're not in man coverage very much, if at all. And it all it does is serves to inflate their rating higher than where it would have been already without having to give them a higher zone coverage number or a higher tackling number or a higher pursuit number or something like that. So do not worry so much about man coverage from a safety perspective you may sometimes get these guys in man coverage i like to run defenses that get my safeties into man coverage i like to adjust them to man coverage sometimes but in madden 24 man coverage has proven to not even be necessarily that great depending on what you're doing with your team so it's up to you whether you want a safety that has that man coverage capability but it is not the most important thing for your safeties on a general basis in madden and then your third tier of ratings is going to be their tackling their pursuit 
their hit power, and those types of things. Those ratings are going to determine how well they can come up and make tackles, how hard they can hit players, how well they're going to be able to pursue the ball and stop the run and stop players that have caught the football. Generally, you can get away with players that have tackling, hit power, and pursuit that are in the 70s. That's why it's not that important. Higher numbers are always going to be better, of course, but you can get away with a safety that has 75 tackling. And then your hit power, some people might rate this as one of the top ratings for safeties. It can be incredibly important if you're good at forcing fumbles and you're good at hit sticking, but to be honest with you, the couple of fumbles that you might force with that guy are not as important as their ability to be in the right place at the right time and make a play. And of course, EA decided to give me an error and kick me off the game and kick me off of everything franchise related within Madden 24 in the middle of making this video. So we're finishing this video out by taking a look at the edit player screen for the same exact player in Cameron Curl just from the main menu. We had pretty much covered everything that was important for a safety. Really, what it comes down to is if you can get an athletic safety that has the play ball aggressive trait, and then you start to build up his zone coverage, his play recognition, and his awareness, you're going to have a very successful player. And this counts for both simulation and user gameplay. If you're using a safety, you can get away with a much lower overall player because you can sacrifice the awareness, the play recognition, and the zone coverage because that's pretty much all up to you. Besides that, you have some secondary things that are going to be useful for these players in their tackling and their pursuit and their, their hit power and those types of things, but they certainly do not come first when you're talking about a safety. You could use these players in various different ways. In some systems, you're going to use certain players to be a sub linebacker and you're going to want a harder hitting type of a player, a bigger bodied type of a player, and that's something worth considering, but it's not going to be the most important factor in whether your safeties play well. If you get away with that good athleticism, good awareness, good play recognition, you're going to be in good shape for any safety at free safety or strong safety, and there's not a whole lot more that you need to worry about with it. One thing that I will say is that your size of your safeties is rather important. Whenever we take a look at some of the better safeties in the league, they're going to be closer to the 6'2", 6'3", type of range, getting up there closer to linebacker size in terms of their height and weight. The bigger a safety is, the better it is generally for your team because they're going to have the range within the game to trigger certain animations. You have to think about how big the actual player model is in a safety of Buda Baker's size compared to a Derwin James size. They just generally have a bigger player model and therefore longer arms and more range to make plays that you wouldn't have with that Buda Baker type of player. That does not mean that Buda Baker isn't a great safety and he is a fantastic safety, but when you get Buda Baker on a six foot four wide receiver, that's a big difference. When you get Derwin James on a six foot four wide receiver, not so much of a big difference. When you get Derwin James on a running back that's 230 pounds, that's not that big of a difference. When you get Buda Baker on a running back that's 230 pounds, that's a big difference. And so the tackling aspect of things, the height aspect of things is going to influence how well your safety is able to do. I always err on the side of six foot plus and getting closer to 220 plus pounds if possible, because that's going to give you the flexibility to go up against tall wide receivers, which can be very overpowered and big running backs, which again can be very overpowered, especially in Madden 24. So so hopefully this video was useful to you. Hopefully this gave you the information you needed to go out and assess your safeties and figure out who you want to have on your team. As always, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Please leave that feedback down below. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you have a good one.